Rise and shine, my mothers and my brothers. Boy, I used to say that at the top of my lungs for years. Some of you remember those days. Just another morning drive vlog daybreak show. We'll be back tomorrow morning. Tomorrow's a salon day for me where I uh, cut men's hair. I don't do ladies' hair anymore. Drinking my coffee in this, this mug, which really holds the heat in. I'm really surprised. Not a lot of travel mugs, but this one really uh, works well. This is a uh, gift from John Hoover down in Texas. John, how are you? I got your messages yesterday talking about vaccine passports. You know, it's, it's so funny. The whole thing reeks of control. I don't give a crap what anyone says. Everything from the virus to the pan dem reeks of control and how it's being managed. Reeks of control. Who's doing it? Who's in charge of it? What is the end goal? Conspiracy theorists are not uh, fringe people anymore. Things that were conspiracies 10 years ago are now mainstream, and the truth has come out. Look at this. The uh, traffic is as full as if it's midday. I made some keto bread, keto cake. This is kind of like my breakfast today. I'll tell you what I did. Uh, six eggs in a blender. Zzz, just mix everything up well. Ten packets of the monk fruit. Uh, two scoops of whey protein. And one. when I say scoops, you know the, the, the larger scoop that comes in the big protein tubs? Two scoops of whey protein. One of those scoops of coconut flour as a binder, which next time I'm probably gonna leave out. A cup of coconut, unsweetened. It's hard to find the unsweetened coconut. A lot of the, co the shredded coconut that you have out there has, um, it's sweet. It's very, very sweet. A pinch of Himalayan salt, a shake of potassium, from a product called No Salt, and did I put boron in it? No. Oh, there's a dude on a motorcycle in front of me. That guy's got to be freezing. I mean, he's dressed, it looks like he's dressed warm, but my lord, you know, wow, still not warm enough for, he's going to get to work and he's going to say, what was I thinking? I guarantee that. I've done things like ride my motorcycle to work in April. And I thought to myself, what the heck was I thinking? And it was way too cold. Way too cold. You know, between 3 and 5 p.m. in the afternoon when it's the warmest of the day, that seems appropriate. But right now, I don't know. That, I don't think, I don't think the most well-equipped best dressed motorcyclist right now could be comfortable. I could be wrong. Yeah, he looks like he's freezing. Anyways, so I wanted to make a keto bread. Keto cake. Keto, you know, that kind of thing. I like the coconut flavor, so I put coconut in it. I mix it in a blender, not a, not a, a blending, not, not a bowl with a mixer or a spoon or anything. Right in a blender. Which gives it a very dense, an extremely dense appearance and feel. It's almost like, you know how pound cake is very dense and heavy, not airy? That's what it's like. Next time I'm going to leave out the flour. I don't need the binder. I wanted it to be more quiche-like versus cake-like, but this is my first try. So eggs, protein powder, a little bit of half and half, no sugar at all, just the monk fruit sweetener, pinch of Himalayan salt, 
and coconut, yep. Bake at 350 for about 40 minutes. And it's it's not bad. It's not bad at all. I mean, it's when you, it doesn't even break up in the pan. You know, a, a glass baking dish that you, you just spray real quick so it doesn't stick. But it browns nicely on top, browns on the bottom. So you could actually cut a thin slice of this, you know, like a like the size of a slice of bread, and you could toast it if you wanted to. So this is day number two with this. And I kind of like it. Uh, no, this is day number three. I like it because it's a little bit more firm. It's not, it doesn't fall apart like cake. It's very dense. And I would imagine even if it sat out for a week and became really firm, you could cut, you could actually cut thin, narrower pieces of this and let it sit out for a week till it's, I don't know if it'll get as hard as uh, biscotti, but something for dipping in the coffee, which I'm a dipper. That's why I've had problems, because I just, I love cookies and sweet things and carbs and all that stuff. So, I'm trying to get back to a keto protein. I'll probably do carnivore for a month. Straight carnivore. But let me take a bite of this before I go any further. Magnificent. What a great early morning drinking with coffee. It's not biscuity. It's not dry like a biscuit, but it's not moist like a cake either. And it's not sweet. This is not a sweet. This is not cinnamon bun sweet. Try it. Mix it all in a blender. Pour it into a greased glass baking dish. 350 degrees for 30 to 40 minutes. Probably 40 minutes because you want everything brown on top and brown underneath. Kind of like a little crust. It's good. You could put nutmeg or cinnamon on the top of it. I just sprinkled a little bit of Vietnamese cinnamon on the top of it. I was having a conversation with somebody about tradition versus traditionism. And the way that I put it was, imagine if aliens were given an assignment to come to Earth and take notes on what humans do in the month of December. Very random. There's no, there's no logic or reasoning behind this. I'm just using my sci-fi imagination and they were to take notes and then get back together and they convene about what humans do in December. And I said, well, they aliens are like observing. They're not putting any, uh, they're not translating anything. They are not attaching any meaning. This group of humans puts lights externally on their house. They erect a tree or sometimes an artificial tree, and they put lights on it, and they embellish it, and then they put gifts around it for children, and they say that those gifts came from a man called Santa or Saint Nick. Some parts of the world it's Saint Nicholas, other parts of the world it's Santa Claus, and that's based upon if the children were good that year because that character, Santa or Saint Nick, was watching them and recording their behavior and rewarding them if they were naughty or nice. Some people open up these gifts on Christmas Eve, a day that they call Christmas Eve. Some open them up on a day they call Christmas morning. Some people leave cookies and milk out for this character on a little table who allegedly comes down a chimney. And they get together, these aliens get together and they report their observations. And they see that this December behavior is different everywhere. And that some people, some of these humans 
defend these behaviors. Some attach it to a philosophical, religious meaning uh, where they talk about a Christ child who was born. Others do it as a cultural holiday and not a religious practice. Can you see where I'm getting with all this? And what happens is when you develop that, you take it to its furthest point, take it to its logical conclusion. You start to see the difference between tradition, traditionism, and true faith. You start to see that, like, if, if the alien who didn't know better, he would think that leaving cookies and milk out for this St. Nicholas character on a day called Christmas Eve, you would think that, that this is an important thing with some people because of how faithfully they do this. And they might come to the conclusion that's part of their philosophical framework. Other people don't do that. And the aliens might scratch their head and say, well, why does this group do this and this group do that? You start to get down to determining what is true faith and what is just cultural tradition based upon truth, proven truth, passed on through written testimony or oral testimony. And it's absolutely fascinating. When you start to strip down what faith in Christ is, faith in, and I'm speaking of Christianity for those of you that are not Christian, I I appreciate your input. You know, it, if, it, if it's not smarmy and sarcastic, if it's intelligent and you can contribute to the conversation, that's fantastic then. Because I am not a Christian channel. I'm a, I'm a Christian man. But this is not a Christian channel. Because I, I welcome everybody. Welcome everybody. Except jerks. And, and sometimes those jerks are Christians. That's what I have found. Unfortunately. But what is the difference between the essentials of the faith and the traditions. What hill would you be willing to die on? Would you die on the leaving cookies and milk out for Santa Claus Hill? Would you die on the Christmas tree hill? Would you die on the... We, we open up one gift on Christmas Eve and the rest on Christmas morning. You know what I'm saying? Like, you start to see what is a tradition and what is truth. And tradition, if, if you do it long enough, and it's all you know, and you start defending it and protecting it, then it's traditionism. And then it becomes the religion of tradition. And then you're a hundred layers removed away from the truth and you start defending tradition and not the truth. Just a thought going through my head as I'm discussing with somebody tradition and traditionism. What are your thoughts about that? I'd love to hear them. Put them down below. I like to teach on this channel, but I also like to think that there is a dialogue here that goes in both directions. What do you think? You know what I think, but I want to know what you think. Have a great day. Go crush it today, will you? Get some positive cash flow going. Don't just go to a job and make some money. Do some make some money outside of your job somehow some way. How can you do that? Are you involved in something that can make you money outside of your Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, 8 to 4 kind of thing. All right. I love you, man.